lesson we defined the law of demand and we showed that it was true by examining the results of a survey of my own students in which I asked them how much candy they would be willing and able to buy weekly at a range of prices. We saw that that relationship was inverse meaning that as the price of candy decreased my students are willing and able to buy more of it each week. In this lesson we're going to distinguish between a change in the quantity demanded for a good and a change in the demand for that good. To guide us we're going to stay with my example of candy. Let's start by adding a price and a quantity to this graph, and then talking about what would happen as the price changes for candy. So let's say that at a price of P, we'll call it P1, my students would be willing and able to buy Q1 units of candy each week. What could cause a change in the quantity of candy demanded? Well, that's pretty simple because we have a line here representing the quantities demanded at each of the prices on our vertical axis. So all that would have to change is the price itself. So for example, if the price falls to P2, we can see that that would lead to an increase in the quantity demanded. Notice that I'm saying quantity demanded and not demand. That's very intentional. There is a big difference, in fact, between a change in the quantity demanded for a good and the demand for that good. And that, in fact, is the purpose of this lesson. So the first thing I want to mention and highlight is that a change in the price of a good causes the quantity demanded to change. Now I'm using the term quantity very intentionally here. That is not the same thing as a change in the in the demand for the good. There is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. However, the demand itself changes when something other than price changes. Before we get into the factors that can cause a change in demand, let's illustrate what a change in the demand for candy would look like. Our original demand curve here, the one that is just called demand and is drawn in black, represents the quantities that my 68 students were willing and able to buy at a range of prices in a week. However, a change in the demand for candy would be illustrated as a shift in the demand curve. First, let's draw a new blue demand curve, and I'll call this one D2 demand 2. As we can see here, D2 is to the right of my black D1 curve. What does that mean though? What it means is that at every price, including P1 and P2, a greater quantity of candy is now demanded by my students. For example, at P1, there is now a quantity of Q2 demanded. And at P2, the lower price, there is now a greater quantity, we'll call this Q3, demanded. So at every price, there is now a greater quantity demanded. This is what happens when there is an increase in demand. Demand for candy has actually increased so that even though the price now stays the same, for example, from P1, we now have a greater quantity demanded. This is the distinction between an increase in the quantity demanded and an increase in the demand itself. If the demand curve shifts, if the demand curve shifts, there has been a change in demand. So a rightward shift is an increase in demand. A leftward shift or an inward shift is a decrease in demand. Let's show a decrease in demand on this graph now. So if something other than the price of candy changed, causing demand to decrease, what we would see is a leftward shift of our demand curve. And I'll label this curve D3. What does a decrease in demand mean? It means that at every price, both P1 and P2, a smaller quantity is now demanded. At P1, we can now see that a smaller quantity is demanded. I'll call this Q0. And at P2, a smaller quantity is demanded. I'll call that Q4. When demand decreased, consumers demanded a smaller amount of candy at every price. So if demand increases, there will be a larger amount of candy demanded at every price. And if demand decreases, there will be a smaller amount of candy demanded at every price. That is distinct from a change in quantity demanded, which occurs when the price itself changes. Looking back at our original demand curve, the black curve, 
we saw that a change in price caused a movement along the same demand curve. However, in the case of D2 and D3, something other than price changed, causing the entire demand curve to shift, and the quantities that consumers demanded at every price to either increase in the case of D2 or decrease in the case of D3. In our next lesson, we're going to go into some more detail about the factors that can actually cause a shift in the demand curve and either an increase in demand or a decrease in demand. The purpose of this lesson was to distinguish between a movement along a demand curve and a shift in demand and explain how the movement along the demand curve results from a change in price, whereas a shift in the demand curve results from a change in some other non-price variable, which we'll discuss in the next lesson. Here we go.